Hello, today is February 17th, Friday, and I have with me Peter Chan, and we are meeting for the first time. We spoke for maybe 15 minutes now, and we continue our conversation. Hey, Peter. How are you? Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. And um, and what what we do, what we do? Um, Peter is doing C5 protocols, and he's interviewing me to. Um, for the group. Yes, because it's good to see somebody in person to make sure he's real and there is a chemistry, um, there is we get along. It's important that we have a cohesion within the group. It's because it's based on meditation, our emotions, and the ability of no fear of the unknown. Wow. No fear. Oh, lots of fear, but you know, it's we don't focus on it. Yes, we don't focus on it because fear is, uh, they use that a lot in religions to control the population. Um, so I the, love religion. All religions, we love everybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, basically, it's all about love. Uh, and today's, uh, the weather is crazy. It's San Diego, but uh, it's windy and rainy, but not cold yet. And Peter came on a, on a foldable bicycle, which was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I got rid of my car a couple of years ago. I've always had cars in San Diego. And I decided just to ditch the car uh, because of um, the global footprint. To, um, I was tired of paying insurance. I was tired of being the chain of the uh, pain, pain, pain to play. Mm -hmm. And this is part of my spin class. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. I combine that with the bus system and train systems, and I get around this way. And that's, I, and that's how I get around to do camping in, in CE5. I take the uh, Amtrak and I go to Mount Shasta, and I'm there. Or I go to Sibis, I take the bus to the um, end of the stop, and it's only 14 miles by bicycle. And I'm there. And I usually get a lift back. Because it's so foldable, it's so tight. It's a Brompton. You can't do it in Chicago. Actually, I did bicycle in Moscow in the winter. It's kind of rough in Moscow. It's rough, it's, but it's possible. It's possible. You gotta stay in the, probably stay in the sidewalk. They'll run you over, probably. Oh, you have to like look behind, oh, look, look, look on all sides, but yeah. you can't go on the snow with a bicycle. You can. Um, I mean, where it's flat. Where it's flat. Uphill, you can't go. Right? No, you need a, <laughs> you need a set of tires or just. I take I take the fourth gear. You walk up. It's my fourth gear. Right. <laughs> right that was young. Now but I'm... this is San Diego. We have no excuse. I call this Copenhagen, San Diego. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh. So you told me about Stephen Greer and about your experiences, right? Yes, I, I actually was in the ghost phenomena, phenomena way before Dr. Stephen Greer. It was out until my brother asked me questions about uh, certain um, ancient artifacts in um, the alien world. And, I, and I, I said, I, I have no proof. I just can't assume. I'm an engineer. We need proof. Uh -huh. And um, I, I happened to run into um, um, not just Dr. Stephen Greer's work, but Richard Dolan's work. Oh. Richard Dolan is my friend on Facebook, and he's a historian. Uh -huh. And I, I, I know Dolan. I love his work because he he's factual. He has the documentation. Um, it's it's great for for the foundational part that oh yes it does exist because uh, uh, officials that are credible have said yes it does exist. Um, with Dr. Stephen Greer, when I saw 2001 disclosure. Mm -hmm. I was totally fascinated. We have pilots, we have military people, we have people in high ranking. It's not just anybody off the street. These are very educated, very articulate people. And I was just floored. And at that point I knew there's something going on. It was not until Dr. Stephen Greer mentioned how he made contact. It's, it was through the meditation process. At that point, I turned the video off. I said, this is crazy talk. I am not going there. Mm -hmm. This is this is a bunch of crap. I did? Yeah, for two weeks. I just let it go. Really? And then I thought, oh, let me think about this. There was Moses and all these other guys back in the old days. Maybe there's something going on. Maybe, maybe there's something I don't know. I should go into more. So I went into more research into Dr. Greer. And where did he get his information from? It was from the Vedics. It was from India. It was from uh, the Vaitanas. And I said, oh, wow, let's, let's go even deeper. So then I figured, oh, my God, there's something going on with consciousness. Ghost phenomena, consciousness. Uh -huh. uh, the Monroe Institute. I'm, right, right, right. I'm part of that group in Poway. Um, it's consciousness. And it's like most things are made of space. 
and and very little is made of matter. So what is the space all about? Maybe it's consciousness that mm -hmm. occupies all that energy in space. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, started. I was Dr. Stephen Greer, and I, I got some training in uh, 2012. It took me three years to, to finally drop the big bucks to go. It's not cheap. Uh. Uh, that was that was the big factor. Right. But it took me three years of research and figuring this out, and then it finally went, and we saw things. Um, totally fascinating and then I started my own group um, a couple months later it all fell it somehow it all fell up in line really it started with uh, Costa McRae up in um, in the um, San Bruno he does ET list talk um, I was looking for information on how to make contact um, then after him it was uh, Dr. Greer's movie and then after that I got picked on his team that same year and Costa said how do you get picked on his team nobody gets picked on the team the first time around I said I don't know but my birthday is 2012. <laughs> and when I was in San Francisco in the hostel, I projected out to him, I want to go this year. I, I visualized it. I sent the message out to the universe. And bam, there I was. He picked me for the first time around. And then I got trained in 2012. And then I started a team in 2013. Six people. It was very, very well balanced. I had two psychics. I had a, a near-death experience guy. I had a, um, a hiker, and I had another guy that had experiences as a child. Uh -huh. So it was very well balanced. I was merely a pimp. I can get people together, and I can organize and form teams. Um, but I tend to be more balanced, I think, in left and right brain, being the pianist, and being open-minded about these things. So I could be logical, too. So because... But anyway, it was a good team. What, what, what did you say your birthday was? Birthday, my birthday? Yeah. 12, 12. 12, 12. 5, 7. 5 and 7 is 12. <laughs> Why 5 and 7? I don't know. Uh, 5 and 7, 57. 19, oh, 57. you're older it's, than I, right? Yeah, it's, it's 12. So as you got all these 12, 12, 12, like, all these threes, it, it, you sum up the numbers, 1 and 2 is 3. Uh, got it. I got that from Randy Powell, which was Vortex Mathematics. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, it involves the uh, zero point. Um, nice. I just want to make more pretty, even pretty. Like oh, yeah, you can edit it. And, no, I don't no. want to edit. Okay, it's like nice and raw, good raw, real I, footage. It's just editing is so so takes so much time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's. What I happened. just kind of upload it. Yeah. So I had a good team the first uh, first year. Uh, we uh, got radio interviews, um, uh, not just once but many times, and some some of our members had individual interviews with um, some interview with the uh, internet radio shows. And um, I started posting on Facebook uh, live videos, and it caught on. People like that. They they're hungry for right, right. Like ghost adventures. We we had ET adventures. <laughs> so did you get any any of the orbs on the video? Oh yes, we do have orbs. Uh, my my second team around, uh, Cameron caught some orbs in, in Mount Shasta. Um, he's very much in tune. Um, we uh, we can see those orbs on ET. Let's talk. Uh, Costa actually published them okay. just last week. Uh, he's, he's he's promoting his uh, his school, mm -hmm. and one of his videos, Cameron's videos, is on there. Mm -hmm. and also, if you go to our um, CE5 San Diego group page, mm -hmm. it should be posted on our group page somewhere. Just some orb videos. Mm -hmm. But um, we don't have a camera guy. You know, we're just we're just everyday folks. Um, but if we have a camera guy that shows up, more power to it. Uh -huh. um, because I always tell them, if you want to see that orbs and UFOs, there's plenty of YouTube videos. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm here to make a connection with right. our friends. And all yeah, I, I'm hesitant. If I see a UFO, I wouldn't even uh, pull pull my phone out because you know there's so many good videos. Right. You know, if they want me to, if they ask me to to photograph them, I would. I would. But otherwise, why would they bother? Right. It's too much extra. Yeah, I, don't want to, wrong. I would rather meditate and connect to them and telepathically rather than you know try to right. photograph them. Right, and and, and almost cheapens to me. It almost does it cheapen the experience. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like meeting a new friend and taking pictures of your friend. Right, right, it's, right. It's, 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 it's so That's what I'm doing right now, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> no, it's, it's different. It's different. It's different. No, it is the so same. We're, we're promoting the. But I asked first. You know, yeah, can, so can you I... did it. Yeah, I, I totally get you. I totally yeah. get you. But you'll be interviewed too by Ray soon. Um, I will. Yes, as um, because, um, we're having um, uh, a channel for our CE5, a documentary 
basically. And we're going to have... Oh, you mean... Yeah. yeah. If, if you join our team, you know, we're going to... Once it. we get all gelled up again, it, as the team grows and expands. Again, teams always grow and expand and, and contract. It's a normal thing. It's not for everybody. But the reason I do your... I take video of you because we co-create, basically. Yes, we do co-create. Yes. I think what you tell me right now as we meet is so nice to capture and uh, we share our experience and publish that. I think it would be nice. For I think so because everybody needs to get out of their freaking closet about this. It's it's data. Basically, it's data. People see these things. It should be recorded and it should be studied in our physics. Um, All right. Suppose somebody doesn't hear, haven't ever heard about Greer and haven't ever heard about CE5. So until now, they, they didn't get any point, right? So we have to explain what it is. Oh. Explain what it is. Oh, CE5. Yeah. CE5 um, is what I think, if I remember, our categories of the extraterrestrial experience. CE1 is where you see it. Um, so many. It's close encounters. Close in, oh, the type first one type is, one. I forgot is, what it was. You watch it, right? Yeah, somewhere far away. Far away. Two is. I don't remember. It gets closer. <laughs> it gets closer. <laughs> gets clo I know four. You get you get pulled into the ship. All you, right, Abduct abduction is four. Well, why shouldn't say abduction? You're you're. Or ex you're they just invited. you're in the, you're invited. invited for a visit. You're okay. invited for tea. I don't know. <laughs> I want four. <laughs> four. Five is when we we do we initiate the contact. Right. So four is close encounter. They take you for a ship, but but you don't initiate it. And five, no. you initiate. we initiate, and they're surprised that we initiate these things. It's right. like seeing a squirrel in initiating contact with us. Uh huh. You know. I mean, no, I invite them since two thousand nine. I invite them all the time. When I spoke first time to this dude, an alien through the channeler, mm -hmm. first words I said, I apply for a visit, <laughs> 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 and I'm still waiting. Right. But uh, this dude is not, basically, he said he can't, uh, because they are in uh, diplomatic relationships with uh, human governments, they can't go over their prohibition. They prohibit to take humans so far. Right. Well, I totally get it, because I think it, uh, I got some training from... Um, Hold on. I will pause. For the first time with him, right? Mm -hmm. There's only four of us. That's when that was during the government shutdown. So we did it, and these the two gigantic white orbs show up over our group. It just popped up, just went to fade it, popped up again, and went to the north against the wind. Now, before we sat down, I make people sit down wherever they want to sit. He, Ted was facing south, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they appeared at the south. I said, Ted, they did it for you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this is holographic universe, they know what's going on. Right, right. They did it for you, Ted. That's why. Okay, we did that. That's fine. Olga, Olga, um, she shows up a month later with us. She says, "I was here before. Ten years ago, we initiated this place with me and some other guy." <laughs> <laughs> said, What are the probabilities? This is crazy. Crazy. This is no. There's no accidents. This is all unfolding. Mm -hmm. Now Olga was one of my was one of my good workers. Uh, we she's like twenty years younger than me. We met in kung fu class. I I'm thought Olga. I would never like. She's a kid. I'm not like hanging out with her. And now we were like working together on this kind of work. Like I don't know, ten years later, this is like wow. This is too crazy. So it's all been planned out already. Mm -hmm. So it's the matrix that we live in. <sighs> and now we're talking. Amazing. So um. And I take him Russian. I will never take Russian in a million right. years. <laughs> I don't know why do you eat Russian. Maybe, maybe something is coming. But uh, I can speak English. <laughs> yeah, no, we can talk English. I mean, it's just that why would I study Russian? Because the know. connection with Joseph Burks. Joseph, Joseph uh -huh. Burks. I met him two years ago, and he took Russian at UCLA. And his right hand man Misha, which is a fictitious name by the way, was from Russia. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> There's something going on. So I was just going to run with yeah, it. Yeah, Russia is interesting. Russia is... Uh, there is so much desire there, desire to change the world. It's kind of... You push it hard, and but uh, from that pressure, there is a desire to change the world. So there, there is a lot of young people who are eager to do something. And they're very different. So the new generation comes 
You know, they they were born after the Soviet Union fell apart. So but they don't know what that is. It's, it's just, they don't know, but they they never they didn't experienced, experience, they never lived it. Yeah, they didn't experience the restrictions, right. so they have a fresh mind. So I, I'm open to 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 work with them. That was that was my dream, to uh, have a CE5 team in, in 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 that area of the world. And there's China. I'm Chinese. Right. There's a lot of friggin' Chinese that can really do this, probably, and get and make some contact. That's a lot of people. So, this, in other words, we're actually disclosing this organically mm. on its own. We don't need the government. We don't need somebody to tell us. This is so organic. It's, it's like one blade of grass. Mm -hmm. And more. you just can't get rid of that grass when it keeps going. So, it's, it's an organic movement. And I think, we're, I think we're headed that way. Fascinating. Totally fascinating. I, although I may never master the Russian language, at least I could read a little bit <laughs> and get uh -huh. around. Uh -huh. And I, I understand the culture and the, and the history, at least. So I'm a little sensitive towards it. So, and plus I'm Chinese. I did, you know, I was born and raised here, but I studied, for some reason, I studied Mandarin years ago to, to reconnect. Can you speak Chinese? Not anymore. I think I, have, I, think I know more Russian than Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Can you cook Chinese? Oh yeah. Okay. Of oh. Qualify. No problem. <laughs> I can cook I can even cook Russian. <laughs> Stop cabbages. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it'd be it'd be fascinating to spread uh, to make new teams out and you know. So I um Are they more open in Russia about this? I mean I mean I heard it. Yeah, um yeah, in Russia there is a tendency to prohibit so much that the system of prohibition becomes ineffective. So it's impossible to hide things in Russia. In America, they're so efficient, they can hide things and they can, you know, really mess up the minds of the whole country. In Russia, uh, they they overdo it, so everybody is very suspicious. And uh, it was in Soviet Union, even in the worst times, there were people who knew everything. And, uh, and now, as I read, uh, we studied, that's, that's you know, that's uh, Tolstoy. Everybody knows Tolstoy. It's one of you know the second name in, in Russian. He wrote a big book, uh, War and Peace, and a big part of War and Peace was about ma Masons and satanic cult. And it was 140 years ago. <laughs> he had of his time. <laughs> right, Blavatsky was from Russia, and uh, uh, 1881 she published her secret doctrine and there she talks about the aliens about creation of a new human race the sixth uh, race about ascension as the whole book about ascension it's theosophy founder of theosophy about hybridization programs um, Atlantis Lemuria you name it you know it was 130 years ago 120 years ago so, yeah, um, and there are a few other Russians who were, like, writing about it, like uh, Rerik and um, uh, Andrei Billy and Gurdjieff. So, we, you know, the whole country is sort of so repressive, but that culture creates stars which kind of look through and uh, are trained to kind of look between, read between, between the lines and, and get the stuff out. And, um, you know, my generation grew up on a book which is called uh, Master and Margaret by Bulgakov. And surprise, it's about satanic cult, about, um, how do you call it, um, um, Luciferian, Luciferian cult. And uh, it shows how the, basically, cabal controls the things. And it was written in 20s, 1920s, and uh, surfaced, no, actually it was written end of 20s, early 30s, finished in 36. And uh, it surfaced in 50s, 60s, as just handwritten copies and <coughs> photographed copies. And we grew up on that book. It's the main book which formed our my generation. So we knew that even before, you know, before it was po popular in the West. But it was kind of fiction literature, but but very profound. It kind of formed our understanding of the world. Fascinating. <laughs> and you know, the the author of that, he he knew stuff. He he was 
uh, researching, and he was a son of a historian who knew stuff. He basically they were connected to Masonic and other secret traditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, well, yeah, just now we're living it. <laughs> right now we're living it. Yes, <laughs> it's amazing. It's like oh my god. Well, they're they're crumbling anyway. Because everybody, everybody's waking up. Uh -huh. the, the, the one thing they hate is that we know, we know, that we know. <laughs> they know that we know, we know. Anyway, right. they like to be in the dark and work in the back. No, no, we already know. It's, right. it's old news. Sorry. Old news, right. <clears throat> we're, all, we're all meditating. We're all going out in the field. We're all making contact. <laughs> right, right. Uh, the story about human colony. I told it a million times, so my people already know it. Uh, it's, it's a short story. But basically, first thing I said to this dude was, I'm applying for a visit, right? So it was I, I was into Reiki, and uh, Jim, my friend, was into Reiki. I just met him, and he was funny. He looked like a redneck, and he still looks like a redneck. Too simple, right? But so positive, so forward going. I was suspicious. If people are too too forward going, you, you become suspicious. What is his interest? Mm. Why he would be that forward? With the motivation to doing this, yeah. But he's still wonderful and forward going. He's just an enlightened guru. Mm. And anyway, he started channeling. He said, "Do you know the aliens are around?" I said, "I'm sure aliens are always around me because I was told many times. Not that I feel them, but right. I, I told many times. I, I, you know, Pleiadians, blah blah blah. So uh, he said they want to speak to you. I said, "Sure," and uh, he kind of. Let one of them enter. It was this dude, and he said, I'm this dude, I've watched you for a while. And I said, I'm applying for a visit. For a visit. Um, and he said, we'll, they will consider your application. <laughs> He's applying for a visit. Right, they, they have a bureaucracy. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. That's they have a bureaucracy, you have to apply. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. I was like, wow. <laughs> right. need a visa. <laughs> you need a visa, right. Extraterrestrial visa. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, it's, it's electronic, but it's still a visa, right? Mm -hmm. So he said, but, you know, we need to test your chemistry if you're compatible with our uh, teleportation thing. I don't think Jim at that time knew the word, word it right, but it was understood, like teleportation. So I said, sure, I give my approval. Next morning I wake up, I have si uh, marks on my body. Oh, scoops or just... Uh, like... Mosquito, big fat uh, mosquito or bee bites. Right. They were seven in geometric pattern, like angle. Oh, okay. And they stayed there for half a year. And uh, um, right here. Yeah. And uh, first, again, I would photograph the, the UFO. I would photograph myself because it is a private matter. They, you know, I, I, I totally believe you. I was like. But later, yeah. later when it started fading and my belief started fading, uh, I photographed just. For myself to remind myself it was real right so that was my first experience it's very tiny right you know it's like it's called stigmata like if you really believe you get it right you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stigmata right 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 yeah, no. uh-huh right so i did the back b minor i understand you did what <laughs> christ stigmata <laughs> it's a few the b minor few b it's, b minor yeah the b minor few book two uh, what is that uh, um, Johann Sebastian Bach's uh, Prelude and Fugues. There were 24 sets, two sets. Th they had stigmata, and the fugue was based on five um, five notes, and it made the melody. Stigmata. It is a musical. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know, he he based it on the Christ um, the crucifixion points. Oh. Stigmata. And you play it? Yes, it's it's the B minor. If you analyze the fugue, it's a stigmata in there. Uh, a fugue, okay. Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, rough topic, but yeah. Now, I, I don't know that language, right? Fuga. Now I'm gonna translate it. Fuga, yeah. Fuga. Fuga. Yeah. Uh, Shostakovich. He did fuga. Shostakovich. Was yeah. it Shostakovich? Who, who uh, was Dimit also? Dimitri Shostakovich. He did the Preludes and Fugues. Got it. 20th century. Got it. Totally cool. Anyway, back up. Stigmata. I, you I had these marks. All right. I don't understand Shostakovich. He's too complex for me. Yeah, he's he's it's more for the you know. I pe like simple people like me. <laughs> I like shamanic sound, so yeah, and yeah. African African. Sound. Yeah, yeah, I totally get you. Simple, ha ha ha, yeah, ha, ha. that's simple. I know. All right. Anyway, back to stigmata. So, um, so they didn't take me, but I, it started me thinking, and I was thinking, I was I knew already by that time I researched. 
David Wilcock uh, was threatened by uh, some bad guys. Mm. And uh, he came to the interview the same day. He came to the interview with um, Kerry Cassidy. And uh, it was a radio interview. Basically, his sound, he just called. He called and he said, I'm threatened. And some, something happened. So someone called to the same uh, radio show. Mm. And that someone was anonymous, but he sounded like he was... He, as I understood, he was speaking from a uh, secret space program somewhere from outside of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was my understanding. Yeah. So I realized, and I started researching that, I realized there is there are humans out there, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that all, all humans are here, all aliens are there. There are humans out there that grew up here and were taken there later. So basically us, mm -hmm. us in the space. Mm -hmm. And there are different branches of that program. So I thought, I want to join them. But if I join them, I want to uh, bring my friends and my family and make a settlement there. And uh, there is a need for someone to explain the aliens what, what is there. What, 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 no, what we are. Mm. Because when I started speaking to the aliens through the channeler, they were completely misunderstanding us. There was so little understanding, it was just laughable. Mm -hmm. They look at us, they were happy look, thinking about global problems, but they couldn't understand individuals, they couldn't understand politicians, they couldn't understand the governments, couldn't understand the economy. Mm. So those aliens who I spoke to, like they were completely like ignoring the things. And that's they, right. they thought How about, was, you know, unimportant you, for them. Yeah. yeah, you take us there and we will set, make a settlement there and we'll explain it to you the stuff and then we do what uh, the West did for the Soviet Union to help the Soviet Union to fall apart and then reform. So the, the main idea, I experienced that from the Soviet Union. There was, uh, uh, it's called Voices, uh, radio programs from the West. There was Voice of China, Voice of uh, America, Voice of Germany, I think. I'm not sure if it was called Voice of Germany, but it was German, couple German stations. And my favorite was Radio Liberty. Radio Liberty was amazing, and it's still amazing. But at that time, it was instrumental because these were our people who emigrated, so they knew the stuff from inside. And that was the only voice who spoke with compassion. Mm. It was sad, compassion, loving voice all the time. And everything else was so lame, like all radio programs in Soviet Union were lame. Mm. You didn't trust anything they would say. But whatever said Radio uh, Liberty, it was reasonably trustable, reasonably, because there was that feeling there, which, which right, you so see, you know, you just know, you just know, you just know, right? you know the bullshit, you know, <laughs> you know, and what's coming is real. Yeah. yeah. So I said, how about we we start Radio Liberty up there? We create a settlement there, and we start Radio whatever Alien, Radio Friendly Aliens, or Radio Friendly Russian Colony, mm -hmm. not Russian Human Colony. So I call it Human Colony. Mm -hmm. Earthlings. Earthlings, yes, Earthlings. And I wrote a whole book about it. It was like two months. I was just writing the letters for them. And uh, I said, here is, I created a Gmail for you. I will write my messages to that Gmail and you can upload them. You know, they should be able to access our Gmail, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, they did, but uh, at least they should be able to. When I asked them in channelings, usually they didn't bother by some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, when I finished the book, they said they read it, they liked it, and it's helped them a lot. And that many, many aliens read it, which I believe, I mean, it, it's a nice book. It's called Welcome to Earth, A Guide for Aliens. So I read the book, and, uh, and then this, it was, I guess, in the summer. And um, in September 2013, uh, we, we kept couple times a week with Jim, we kept doing the channeling sessions. And uh, 
I said, you know, um, so you basically they confirmed that they approved approved starting the colony. Yeah, it was end of September. Our, our friend Akur said it was approved. And I said, do you mind inviting people on record? And she said, I invite people. So I say, how about we just create a, an address and people would write there and uh, apply. You know, that's simple, right? If you have a con contact with the alien, they say we approve, so we can create an email address and people will write. So, and that started the community online. Basically, I published it in several places, started the website, started the YouTube channel. And tons of people joined us and applied. And there was an expectation that they will start taking us, right? <laughs> and uh, some people experienced, many people experienced at least the interview. In the interview, basically, you apply next night, the same night, uh, somebody comes to you like in astral projection state and they interview you. So many, many people confirm that. They experience that. And some people remember it going there, but most of the people don't. Mm -hmm. And I remember things like as dreams. Mm -hmm. Like I see people, I like I hold a child. I remember like a moment, like flashing memory. I hold a child and I, it's very dear to me, right? And, and things of that sort. So most of that is kind of, I don't know, we still don't know why. And they say they don't know why, but they take us as some sort of holographic projections and uh, very little memory is, is uh, kept. Mm. Elena Kapulnik <laughs> visited there and she remembers tons more and it's already on record, we asked her. So the colonies sort of exist, but they exist in some reality which is not very easily to address, access. Mm -hmm. But the community is there, we have a few hundred people, we, we channel and now we speak galactic languages. Those, it's, it's another story, basically. People, many people speak languages for a lifetime and then they find us and they discover that there are other people who speak the same language. Most popular is Arcturian. Another popular is Liran, uh, Pleiadian, and uh, snake language, reptilian language, so on. So that's another, uh, that's a great confirmation. At some point, um, like Jim Kama came up with Arcturian language, someone else came up with Arcturian language. We had like more than you know 15 people speaking Arcturian language. We have uh, we had a webinar where, like we do it all live, words. Nine people spoke Arcturian language, taking turns and um, playing a play, some sort of a play, and then Jim translated what it was. And then he found uh, uh, a young lady who speaks that Arturian language who published that maybe 10 years before us, or maybe seven years before us. So that was a nice confirmation. So people independently come up with the same same uh, language. Not many understand it, but some do, some do. And now Wendy is pretty good. Um, Brian is very good, Brian seems is very good with uh, galactic languages. He speaks perfect Arcturian, right? Interesting. Has it has it been recorded? Yeah, it's all, it's all on YouTube. Somewhere. We do it like live, live and recorded on right. Hangouts. We have like tons of videos, um, you know, hundreds, hundreds of hours of videos, and uh, it's like three years now. Mm. And every Saturday we have a webinar when somebody channels, and there is like ten. 20 people asking questions. Right. It's all live and recorded all the God, you're way over there. Yeah, you're no, way over there. Yeah, way over there. Yeah, we're just we're just we're just down home folks just trying to make contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have the contact. Right? But it's kind of it's channeled contact, right? Yeah. I want more more um, more tangible. Right. I got my my confirmation, so I'm I'm happy like my most of my confirmations are of spirit nature. I, I basically there is that sus suspicion theory that you know what if aliens are not real? What if spirits are real? And it's conspiracy of the spirits right, no, it's like, yeah, that they yeah, pretend yeah. to be aliens. Right, right. And I mean, I, you, you don't know. You, you have to test it, right? You have to test it. You have to get no fear. Collect the data. Sort it out. You have to be there. But and Tom Campbell mentions this also. Maybe this is just a gigantic hologram, and the guy who's on the program is inserting all the data <laughs> it's not just the right direction and, I mean, but you know I, I interviewed several 
um, experiences who visited the, the ships and their stories are so real. So I, it's, it's pretty real. Yeah, well, like I said, maybe they're so advanced it, it seems paranormal, that's all. And, and I think it's hard for us to uh, distinguish per, uh, ghost activity and their activity. It's because it's so close. The, you know, the, yeah, another suspicion. I always tell uh, during our uh -huh. contact work, I know you hear the spirits, but um, not tonight. We have a date with E.T. <laughs> I always put that out there. I don't want to ruin the data tonight. Well, but we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be polite. <laughs> no, I, I do it all the time, yeah. Sometimes E.T.s bother me. Like, you know, when their stories are not uh, coherent, I say, let's speak to angels. And angels are much more, so they authorized E.T.s are not authorized to release a lot of information. And angels are messengers. They are much more, they have more authority. So when it is cannot answer your question, invite an angel and the angel will answer that. So, oh. so when it is disappointing, you invite angels. Okay. Well, I'll invite <laughs> angels then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a breath. Okay. Taboos out there in the uh, biology, physics world. If you start doing, I call it the woo woo. Does it does it hit a third rail? Uh, people, it's not only the taboo. People just don't get it. It's like for them, if you start speaking waves, they just you lose them right away. Right. Uh, the 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 ones who speak waves, they don't understand uh, the importance of that. They can speak about physics of it, get excited about nanometers, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. To combine the biology, the DNA, and waves, there are it's alternative science. Uh, there are several more names around, like Garyaev uh, and uh, Fritz Albert Pope and uh, uh, and several others. There is a community who speaks about, but uh, there are different different angles at which you can approach that. Mm -hmm. So Garyaev gave me a blessing. I spoke to him. He said, "Yeah, I believe it's right," but again, he was pushing his agenda at the same time. Right, right. right. He wanted to sell his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you blame him? It's his life work, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So I don't know. Um, the story about origin of humanity, origin of man, is interesting, but I'm still confused about it. That's another story, very interesting, which I kind of dig through. And uh, I'm finishing the book now. Yeah, it would be like my sixth book. That would be the update on the things and kind of. Uh, the story goes that my friend's daughter, she's only 15 years old, and she's kind of a, a starseed <laughs> child, which is very This is generation, I think, it's been changing, like Cameron's yeah. kids. Yeah. That one child can see things. So um, she said, what can I read about aliens? And I look at my, you know, all the books I know. There is nothing for, for, for teenagers who... Oh! Ray Dahl. She What's has it? Ray Dove, the, the person that you want a friend on Facebook. Okay. She has a coloring book in Amazon uh -huh. for e C E five for children. Uh -huh. It's really cute. I mean, it's that's it's starting. It's out right. there. Okay. So yes. So we need more books for people who are not clouded, who don't need proven. They just want information. So I'm writing a book where I just give it as I understand it, without proving anything. Just you know. Pleiadians are from Pleiades, mm. Yayala from Pleiades, mm. and so on. Um, just put it out there. <laughs> just, just no sugar coated. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Put it out there. Yeah. So I'm finishing that. So I guess based on that book, I will create my talk and then start start, start speaking. First on YouTube, and then we'll see who right. wants me to listen. Exactly. Yeah. Why not? Just Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta start somewhere. It's lonely when you first start out. You get like one view. <laughs> no, no, I have. No, we have reasonable number of views. Like our usual Jim's, Jim's channel is are about a thousand views. Wow, that's Kapunik a lot. Kapunik about ten thousand views. That's a lot. It's huge. Uh, and me is about hundred views, but <laughs> no, no, actually three hundred views. But some of my videos where I kind of get onto the right topic. You know Bashar, right? Bashar. Yeah, I heard Bashar, yeah. So at some point, Bashar said something which was on YouTube. And then he came through Jim. Bashar said something through Daryl Anka, who is his channeler. 
And then Bashar is a, came through Jim on our webinar and also said the same thing. So I combined these two videos together and published that. It's, it's nice, it's a nice proof when the same extraterrestrial speaks the same thing through two independent channelers. And I'm sure Jim is not watching YouTube. It's it's not right. Oh, that's good. It's good to have confirmation to two different it's, channelers. It's, that's when I say, okay, there's something going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We had that situation in one of our field work when the one channeler sensed it, and then the other guy confirmed it. No independently. way. No. Yes, independently. It was Doctor Gray at the time, but yeah, it was fascinating. I said, wow, there's something going on. I love it. <laughs> That's how uh, the spirits introduced to me one of my incarnations. They, uh, on the same day, had two different channelers channeling to me, and I asked, "What should I read?" To both of them, and they gave me the same book. Yeah, it's confirmation right there. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, they do like pretty things like that right. nowadays. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. We can wrap it up. Is it a wrap? Say yeah, bye. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you bye. for watching. Do you have any advertisements? No advertisements. We're just we're just a bunch of people that go out in the field and make contact. Um, you don't invite any people. We we have to go through the process. So the interview, fill out the forms. Uh, yeah. How do they find you? Uh, we they find us through uh, Facebook. CE5 San Diego, it'll pop right up. Yeah, one word, CE5, Close Encounters 5, San Diego, CE5 San Diego, one word, CE5 San Diego, search on Facebook and then you find Peter Chan. Or one of our members, we're all on there doing our thing. Right. Yeah. Do you have any advertisements? Uh, tomorrow we do Shans Once and yay! Actually, I know that will be published after that. But anyway, Shans Once and is uh, the. Yeshua channel Yeshua from Yael for many years now, so it's nice to have him. And on Sunday we do Kapulnik. And I'm considering to uh, start a subscription service on our YouTube channel. So you can find us on uh, Human Colony uh, Human Colony on uh, Facebook, Human Colony Group, private group. And join us on Facebook and uh, join our discussions. And I invite, as usual, help with transcriptions of our channelings. I invite help with hosting our webinars. Right now, Bree is doing most of the host, all the hosting. And we need more work power. So if you are good with timing and technology, we can teach you, Bree, Bree can teach you or I can teach you what buttons to press. And then we need hosts to, do host, uh, to host our uh, hangouts. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for and uh, thank you for being with us. Have a good day. Um, Robert Bingham is another um, initiator. He lives up in uh, up in uh, Los Angeles. He does it during the day. And right. He taught us how to do this during the day. We focus. And we did this with our CE5 San Diego during the day at our site. And things did show up. We had an orb show up. And it went across in the, the blue sky. sky. In the blue sky. It was a white little orb. But when we took a picture of it, it had spikes coming out of it. As if it knew what we were doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, re it reminded me of the skull experiment. C-S-C-O-L-E. I, I read about it. Where they manipulate the film or whatever. So there's something going on in their what technology. Oh, the, 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 the spirits. The, yes, the spirit or or maybe the extraterrestrial. We don't know. It's, it's a possibility. They introduced themselves as spirits. Or they're so high in advanced in their in their technology, yeah. it seems very um, paranormal. So for the viewers, the school experiment was in England about seventy years, maybe more, about seventy years ago, I would say. Right. They have a book about it, and a group of mediums invited the spirits, and they had films, and the spirits would write on films, and then they would, the the mediums would ex, uh, develop it. And there was writings. Something else, yes, absolutely. And yeah. photographs, lots of information. Right. And it's all in the book. Yeah. And I like it. I have it somewhere here on the shelf. Or well, maybe they've given us nudges of this is what the real reality is. So back to back to the, uh -huh. the, the human factor. I think that, that, um, Bingham said the reason that 
And when you first do this, you only get little bits and pieces. But if you get a lot of information, it will make you crazy. It's just, oh, sure, it's yeah. just too much. And you have to function in your in your day to day life after right. that. Right. I'm already crazy, but you know, I still can function a little bit. <coughs> yeah, I can imagine. I have to cook, right? So Right. If you give it too much, you can can cook them. Right. I mean, too much. That's why they they like to keep it at bay sometimes. They're, right. just, they're still quite primitive. And um, Dolan, I um, when I started, I googled. I was in Rochester, New York. <coughs> so first thing I like on the first day, I googled you for Rochester, and Richard is from Rochester, mm -hmm. so it, he came up there and. Uh, on meetup.com, there is a group of uh, UFO interest group. So I came to their meeting, and I'm always late, but by that time I was terribly late. I was like maybe an hour late. And it was best meeting ever. I didn't have such a good meeting ever again, but uh, more great meetings, but this was, was right to the point. That was an uh, experience of certain lady. I don't think she named her on YouTube. Anyway, uh, lady, let's call it her um, an experiencer number three. So this uh, lady, she in, ch in her childhood, they ask her if she can uh, help to save a race, and she still doesn't know which race. Is it our race or their race? But anyway, she agreed, so she is a volunteer, and she was a lifelong abductee and visited the ships. And when she agreed, her, she was smart enough to ask them, just let me keep the memories. Mm -hmm. Let me keep the memories. So she remembers tons. And I did like two series of interviews about maybe 10 hours total. It's all on YouTube. So I tried to to get, you know, whatever she can tell about the specifics so I can ask somebody else and get confirmations. Like what kind of... If they get you on a table, what kind of table is it? Does it have four legs, two legs, one leg, no legs, right? That, that can, you know, where is, uh, how the, do the lamps look like? How mm. the computers look like? You mm. know? What are, what is their dress? How mm. do they telepath when they talk telepathically? Telepathically, do do they open their mouth? So, so you know, that was that's an amazing experience. Or, you know, there are others like that, but right, I and, and I I totally believe them, but 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 what we do, we need three witnesses. What, in our encounters, um, right. I always require three people on the team to be there uh -huh. for validity. Um, yes, she's just talking, but when you put that in the, in the sense of uh, data, it's just her talking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because <clears throat> reality is not so real, the experiences are can be true for her, but not true for everybody else. Right. 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 Now we have Kapulnik, Elena Kapulnik. Um, she is also amazing, and she confirms a lot of things I already know, so that is nice. Um, and Richard Dolan was uh, was there. He was basically guiding the group, and he was writing the books as he was guided. So 2009, he already finished the main series of his books, but he was he kept writing, mm -hmm. and uh, soon he wrote the book, which is A Day After Disclosure. And when he, when I saw him coming up with the idea right there, he discussed it on the meeting, like it was just a simple slideshow. Then it was uh, more like more sophisticated story, and then he started reading parts of it, and then he finished the book. And uh, as I saw that, I, I realized I should write a book too. So I, I did the same thing. I did first a slideshow, and then I wrote a book, and I summarized what I knew. And my approach was was different in a way. I really like channelers, so I focused on Bashar first, and then combined all channelers I could find, all experiencers I could find, kind of combined the the story. And um, my main question, it still stands, largely unanswered, is how is it possible that we evolved on Earth from primitive organisms and we are related to our mice to our fish birds we all related it's very close the genes. dna part yeah so we sort of <clears throat> evolved here and people show up from the sky who are uh, who look like humans right and they say they have been here like million years ago before before many things happen so it's it's still an unsolved problem I, right well i i, I kind of believe that maybe they could have tweaked the dna in the monkey that we were 
uh, because it, we were only we were, we've only been here for so long, but yet advanced so much in our technology um, as a species. Usually, species takes millions of years to evolve. Ours was very quickly. Right. And why in our jaw, there's a lot of like wisdom teeth that can they need to be pulled. Most animals don't have that issue, I don't think. <laughs> Do they have extra teeth that they don't need? That's unnecessary. Because um, you look at the extra thresholds, their jaws are quite small. Right. I have a, you know, every... I don't know. Every dentist tell, tells me, like, you have so tiny jaw... And when they when they do X ray at a dentist office, I say, can they have a child's um, X ray insert? Because I can't just put a big insert. Right, exactly. <laughs> so my question is, may uh, since we are from apes and we evolved so quickly, um, th maybe this is the evidence that it could have been tweaked. Because I can't I can't recall any animal that has um, teeth problems like we have with, with crowded teeth. Uh, a shark. <laughs> oh, they're, they're constantly. They're constantly. <laughs> You know. All right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, my, that's my that's little an theory. That's idea. my little theory. I mean, I, um, yeah, but biology of that is is interesting. Uh, basically, we have two origins, and um, the things just don't make tons of sense. It's right. either one or another. But I say things are just not as real as they seem. Well, um, I, I do believe this is we do live in a hologram. Yeah. Um, I've been studying a lot with Nassim Haramein. I've been to his right. opening ceremony. Um, th I know him and. With his movie mm. premiere, and I know Mark Sims. Mark Sims is a big factor in this thing too. Mark yeah. Sims and I trained with Dr. Greer. Mark Sims had a visitation in his hotel room uh -huh. uh, with, with Taj Bar. Um, you can pull them out in, in YouTube, and you'll see who Mark Sims is. I know Mark Sims through Brian Sims. Oh, you know Brian. I know Brian. This is a small world. <laughs> I, I know their family very well. We we've been camping together and we hang out. And Brian is one of us. We have a human colony a community. Yes, he gave me a. Uh, we did a Skype. Yeah, he's part of the. And uh, Brian is one of us. He just recently did a channel, wonderful channel, um, presentation. Right. Show and um, I want. We want more of him. He kind of until now he was mostly spoke for himself and last time he spoke as a channeler and it was just next level most channelers when they speak you kind of say yes yes and when he speaks every time he speaks and he speaks slowly I get wow it's it's different mm. it's I don't know what it is but like there is a question and your thinking is standard kind of standardized you know how that question can be answered and then he comes up with the answer is completely like completely perpendicular to everything you would have in your in your mind. So that was a, a very nice surprise because when I first met Brian, he was agreed with everything. I asked him, "Can you say something which is not trivial?" And he couldn't. But when he channels, it's just the other way around. Mm. So human Brian is physical mind of Brian is very agreeable. And channel, channel Brian, channeling Brian is very, uh, what's it, unorthodox, yeah, unorthodox. So I, I communicated with Mark Sims a little, but um, I, I want more, yeah. You, you, you'll, probably, you'll probably see more of him later on, because uh -huh. he knows me, he knows you. Mm -hmm. he, he, I, in fact, I think our group inspired him to, to have CE5 Michigan. Uh, he's, he's, because... Uh, Whatever. I, I, I tend to be visionary. I, I, I tend to work on a small budget and I like to plant the seeds and, it, uh -huh. and let it happen. Mm -hmm. um, I can see more of these teams popping up, um, more videos like this popping up, more cottage industries popping up with the, the subject matter. Um, Talking about small budget, uh, can you just buy a cheap uh, infrared camera or infrared monocular for 100 bucks and use it? I don't I'm, or do you need three thousand dollars monocular? Infrared? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not an expert at those. Are and those? Um, maybe eBay has them. I don't know. On Amazon, there are cheap ones and more expensive ones and terribly expensive ones. And what's the difference? I don't know. I, you know what? Just just work with the budget and then have it grow on its own. Yeah, let's get the cheap one. And get the cheap one it. and try it. And you know, but I think I, the best instrument is yourself. Right. Yeah, we're the best EMF detector. Um, um, but you know where again. Do you, where do you go? Which part do you go to the desert? No, we actually go an hour away. It's it's. This is the story. This is the weirdest story I'm telling uh -huh. you. 
It's Sippet Flats. Uh -huh. It's an hour away. Um, What's that? Hour away is the name of place. It's no, it's one hour from San Diego. Okay. It's in the, it's in the mountains of San Diego. Okay. And um, when you go there, it's very magical. It's we have the campground, but you walk inside to the valley where we're at, and it's like oh, wow, you can feel it. You can really feel. It. And then our in our place, there's a circle of grass mm -hmm. that hasn't grown back. It's permanently there, <laughs> as if something landed there. Um. Can you name the place, or is it a secret? Not a secret. It's it's Sibbets, Sibbets, Sibbets Flats. Um, it's a local place. Um, Sibbets Flats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we will go there when the time comes, and just bring a video. And in ten days. In ten days, we'll be there. Yay! But the the story behind that was is my my team member Ted wanted to go there, and he always thought that was be a great idea to go there. So we went there for the first time with him. Right? Mm -hmm. There's only four of us. That's when was during the government shutdown so we did it and these the two gigantic white orbs show up over our group it just popped up just went just faded popped up again and went to the north against the wind now before we sat down i make people sit down wherever they want to sit he ted was facing south mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they appeared at the south i said ted they did it for you <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because this is holographic universe they know what's going on right, right. they did it for you ted that's why okay we did that. That's fine. Olga, Olga, um, she shows up a month later with us. She says, I was here before. Ten years ago, we initiated this place with me and some other guy. <laughs> <laughs> what are the probabilities? This is crazy. Crazy. This is, no, there's no accidents. This is all unfolding. Mm -hmm. Now Olga was one of my was one of my good workers. Uh, we she's like twenty years younger than me. We met in kung fu class. I, I thought Olga. I would never like she's a kid. I'm not hanging out with her. And now we were like working together on this kind of work. Like I don't know, ten years later, this is mm -hmm. like wow, this is too crazy. So it's all been planned out already. Mm -hmm. So it's the matrix that we live in. <sighs> and now we're talking. Amazing. So. Um and I take him Russian. I would never take Russian in a million right. years. <laughs> I don't know why doing it Russian. Maybe, maybe something is coming. But uh, I can speak English. <laughs> yeah, no, we can talk English. I mean, it's just that why would I study Russian? Because the know. connection was Joseph Burks. Jo Joseph uh -huh. Burks. I met him two years ago, and he took Russian at UCLA. And his right hand man Misha, which is a fictitious name by the way, was from Russia. <laughs> I said, there's something going on. So I was just going to run with Yeah, it. Russia is interesting. Russia is... Uh, there is so much desire there, desire to change the world. It's kind of... You push it hard, and but uh, from that pressure, there is a desire to change the world. So there, there is a lot of young people who are eager to do something. And they're very different. So the new generation comes... You know, they they were born after the Soviet Union fell apart. So but they don't know what that is. It's, it's just, they don't know, but they they never they experienced. Experience, they never lived it. Yeah, you know. didn't experience their restrictions. Right. So they have a fresh mind. So I, I'm open to 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 work with them. That was that was my dream to uh, have a CE5 team in, in 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 that area of the world. And there's China. I'm Chinese. Right. There's a lot of friggin' Chinese that can really do this probably and get and make some contact. That's a lot of people. So this, in other words, we're actually disclosing this organically mm -hmm. on its own. We don't need the government. We don't need somebody to tell us. This is so organic. It's, it's like one blade of grass. Mm -hmm. And more. you just can't get rid of that grass when it keeps going. So it's it's an organic movement. And I think we're, I think we're headed that way. Fascinating. Totally fascinating. I, although I may never master the Russian language, at least I could read a little bit <laughs> and get uh -huh. around. Uh -huh. And I understand the culture and the and the history at least. So I'm a little sensitive towards it. So and plus I'm Chinese. I did you know, I was born and raised here, but I studied for some reason I studied Mandarin years ago to, to reconnect. Can you speak Chinese? Not anymore. I think I have I think I know more Russian than Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Can you cook Chinese? Oh yeah, okay. Of oh, qualify. No problem. <laughs> I can cook. I can even cook Russian. <laughs> Stuffed cabbages. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fascinating to spread uh, to make new teams out. And, yeah. So I um. Are they more open in Russia about this? I mean, I mean, I heard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. In Russia, 
there is a tendency to prohibit so much that the system of prohibition becomes ineffective. So it, it's impossible to hide things in Russia. In America, they're so efficient, they can hide things and they can, you know, really mess up the minds of the whole country. In Russia, uh, they, they overdo it, so everybody is very suspicious. And uh, it was in Soviet Union, even in the worst times, there were people who knew everything. And uh, uh, now, as I read, um, we studied, that's, that's you know, that's uh, Tolstoy. Everybody knows Tolstoy. It's one of, you know, the second name in, in Russian. He wrote a big book, uh, War and Peace. And a big part of War and Peace was about ma Masons and Satanic cult. And it was 140 years ago. He had of his time. <laughs> right, Blavatsky was from Russia. And uh, uh, 1881, she published her Secret Doctrine. And there she talks about the aliens, about creation of a new human race, the sixth uh, race, about ascension. It's the whole book about ascension. It's theosophy, founder of theosophy, about hybridization programs, um, Atlantis, Lemuria, you name it, you know, it was 130 years ago, 120 years ago. So, yeah, um, and there are a few other Russians who were like writing about it, like uh, Rerik and um, uh, Andrei Bely and Gurdjieff. So, we, you know, the whole country is sort of so repressive, but that culture creates stars which kind of look through and uh, are trained to kind of look between, read between, between the lines and, and get the stuff out. And, um, you know, my generation grew up on a book which is called uh, Master and Margaret by Bulgakov. And surprise, it's about satanic cult, about, um, how do you call it? Um, um, Luciferian, Luciferian cult, and uh, it shows how the basically cabal controls the things, and it was written in twenties, nineteen twenties, and uh, surfaced. No, actually, it was written end of twenties, early thirties, finished in thirty six, and uh, it surfaced in fifties, sixties as just handwritten copies and photographed <coughs> copies. And we grew up on that book. It's the main book which formed our my generation. So we knew that even before, you know, before it was po popular in the West. But it was kind of fiction literature, but but very profound. It kind of formed our understanding of the world. Fascinating. <laughs> and you know, the the author of that, he he knew stuff. He, he was uh, researching and he was a son of a historian who knew stuff. He basically, they were connected to Masonic and other secret traditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, well, yeah, just, now we're living it. <laughs> right, now we're living it, yes. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like, oh my God. Well, they're, they're crumbling anyway. Because everybody, everybody's waking up. Uh -huh. the, the, the one thing they hate is that we know we know that we know <laughs> they know that we know we know anyway right. they like to be in the dark and work in the back no no we already know it's, right. it's old news sorry old news, right. <clears throat> we're, all, we're all meditating we're all going out in the field we're all making contact <laughs> right right uh, the story about human colony I told you a million times so my people already know it uh, it's, it's a short story but basically first thing I said to this dude was I'm applying for a visit, right? So it was, I, I was into Reiki, and uh, Jim, my friend, was into Reiki. I just met him, and he was funny. He looked like a redneck, and he still looks like a redneck. Too simple, right? But so positive, so forward going. I was suspicious. If people are too, too forward going, you, you become suspicious. What is his interest? Mm. Why he would be that forward? With motivation to do this, yeah. But he's still wonderful and forward going. He's just an enlightened guru. Mm. And anyway, he started channeling. He said, do you know the aliens are around? I said, I'm sure aliens are always around me. Because I was told many times. Not that I feel them, but right. I, I told many times. I, I, you know, Pleiadians, 
blah, blah, blah. So uh, he said, they want to speak to you. I said, sure. And uh, he kind of let one of them enter. It was this dude. And he said, I'm this dude. I've watched you for a while. And I said, I'm applying for a visit. For a visit. Um, and he said, we'll, we'll consider your application. <laughs> He's applying for a visit. Right. They, they have a bureaucracy. <laughs> I think it was hilarious. That's how... They have a bureaucracy. You have to apply. Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. I was like, wow. <laughs> Right. Need a visa. <laughs> you need a visa. Right. Extraterrestrial visa. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, it's it's electronic, but it's still a visa, right? Mm -hmm. So he said, but you know, we need to test your chemistry if you're compatible with uh, our teleportation thing. I don't think ne Jim at that time knew the wor word it right, but it was understood like teleportation. So I said, sure, I give my approval. Next morning, I wake up. I have si uh, marks on my body. Old scoops or just uh, like mosquito, big fat uh, mosquito or bee bites. Right. They were seven and geometric pattern like angle. Oh, okay. And they stayed there for half a year. And uh, um, right here. Yeah. And uh, first, again, I would photograph the the UFO. I would photograph myself because it is a private matter. They, you know, I, I I totally believe you. I was like, but later, yeah. later when it started fading and my belief started fading. Uh, I photographed just for myself to remind myself it was real. Right. So that was my first experience. It's very tiny, right? You know, it's like, it's called stigmata. Like, if you really believe, you get it, right? You know, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. stigmata, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, no. Uh-huh. Right. So. I did the Bach B minor, I understand. <laughs> you did what? Christ stigmata. <laughs> it's a few, the B minor few. B, B minor? Yeah, the B minor few book two. Uh, what is that? Uh, um, you have Sebastian Bach's uh, Prelude and Fugues. There are 24 sets, two sets. Th they had stigmata, and the fugue was based on five um, five notes, and it made the melody. It's stigmata. It is a musical. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it, no, it, he, he based it on the Christ um, uh, crucifixion points. Oh, stigmata. And you play it? Yes, it's it's the B minor. If you analyze the fugue, it's a stigmata in there. Ah, a fugue, okay. Yeah, no. yeah, I mean, rough topic, but yeah, now I... I don't know that language, right. That's fuga, okay. now I'm going to translate it. Fuga, yeah, fuga. Fuga, yeah. Uh, Shostakovich, he did fuga also. Shostakovich, was yeah. it Shostakovich? Who uh, was Dimit it also? Dimitri Shostakovich, he did the Preludes and Fugues. Got it. 20th century. Got it. Totally cool. Anyway, back up. Stigmata, I, you I had these marks. All right, I don't understand Shostakovich. He's too complex for me. Yeah, he's he's it's more for the you know. I like simple people like me. <laughs> I like shamanic sound, sound. Yeah, and yeah. African African. Sound. Yeah, yeah, I totally get you. Simple, ha ha ha, yeah, ha, ha. that's simple. I know. All right. Anyway, back to stigmata. So, um, so they didn't take me, but I, it started me thinking, and I was thinking, I was I knew already by that time I researched. Um. David Wilcock um, was threatened by uh, some bad guys. Hmm. And uh, he came to the interview the same day. He came to the interview with um, Kerry Cassidy. And uh, it was a radio interview. Basically, his sound, he just called. He called and he said, I'm threatened. And some, something happened. So someone called to the same uh, radio show. Mm -hmm. And that someone was anonymous, but he sounded he was he. As I understood, he was speaking from a secret space program somewhere from outside of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that was my understanding. Yeah. So I realized, and I started researching it. I realized there is there are humans out there, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that all all humans are here, all aliens are there. There are humans out there. That grew up here and were taken there later. So basically, us, mm -hmm. us in the space, mm -hmm. and there are different branches of that program. So I thought I want to join them, but if I join them, I want to uh, bring my friends and my family and make a settlement there. And uh, there is a need for someone to explain the aliens what what is there. What 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 no? What we are, mm. because when I started speaking to the aliens through the channeler, they were completely misunderstanding us. There was so little understanding; it was just laughable. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. They look at us, they were, were happy look, thinking about global problems, but they couldn't understand individuals, they couldn't understand politicians, they couldn't understand the governments, couldn't understand the economy. Mm. So those aliens who I spoke to, like they were completely like ignoring the things. And I said, they, they how about, was, you know, unimportant you, for them. You know. Yeah, you take us there and we will set, make a settlement there and we'll explain it to you the stuff and then we do what uh, the West did for the Soviet Union, to help the Soviet Union to fall apart and then reform. So the, the main idea, I experienced that from the Soviet Union, there was, uh, uh, it's called Voices, uh, radio programs from the West. There was Voice of China, Voice of uh, America, Voice of Germany, I think. I'm not sure if it was called Voice of Germany, but it was German, couple German stations. And my favorite was Radio Liberty. Radio Liberty was amazing, and it's still amazing. But at that time, it was instrumental because these were our people who emigrated, so they knew the stuff from inside. And that was the only voice who spoke with compassion. Mm. It was sad, compassion, loving voice all the time and everything else was so lame like all radio programs in soviet union were lame mm -hmm. you didn't trust anything they would say but whatever said radio uh, liberty it was reasonably trustable reasonably because there was that feeling there which, which right it's so you, you know you just know you just know you just know right? you know the bullshit you know <laughs> you know <laughs> and what's coming is real yeah, yeah. So I said, how about we, we start Radio Liberty up there, we create a settlement there, and we start Radio whatever Alien, Radio Friendly Aliens, or Radio Friendly Russian Colony, mm -hmm. not Russian, Human Colony, so I call it Human Colony. Mm -hmm. Earthlings. Earthlings, yes, Earthlings. And I wrote a whole book about it. It was like two months, I was just writing the letters for them, and uh, I said, here is, I created a Gmail for you. I will write my messages to that Gmail and you can upload them, you know. They should be able to access our Gmail, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not that they did, but uh, at least they should be able to. When I asked them in channelings, usually they didn't bother by some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, when I finished the book, they said they read it, they liked it, and it's helped them a lot. And that many, many aliens read it, which I believe, I mean, it, it's a nice book. It's called Welcome to Earth, A Guide for Aliens. So I read the book and uh, and then this, it was I guess in the summer and um, in September 2013 uh, we, we kept a couple times a week with Jimmy, we kept doing the channeling sessions. And uh, I said, you know, um, so you basically they confirmed that they approved approved starting the colony. Yeah, it was end of September. Our, our friend Tucker said it was approved. And I said, "Do you mind inviting people on record?" And she said, "I invite people." So I say, "How about we just create a, an address and people would write there and uh, apply?" You know, that's simple, right? If you have a con contact with the alien, they say we are proof, so we can create an email address and people will write. So, and that started the community online. Basically, I published it in several places, started the website, started the YouTube channel. And tons of people joined us and applied. And there was an expectation that they will start taking us, right? <laughs> and uh, some people experienced, many people experienced at least the interview. The interview basically you apply next night the same night uh, somebody comes to you like in astral projection state and they interview you. so many many people confirm that they experience that and some people remember it going there but most of the people don't mm -hmm. and I remember things like as dreams mm -hmm. like I see people I like I hold a child I remember like a moment like flashing memory I hold a child and I, it's very dear to me right and, and things of that sort. So, most of that is kind of, I don't know, we still don't know why. And they say they don't know why, but 
they take us as some sort of holographic projections and uh, very little memory is, is uh, kept. Mm -hmm. Elena Kapulnik visited there and she remembers stones more and it's already on record, we asked her. So the colonies sort of exist, but they exist in some reality which is not very easily to address, access. Mm -hmm. But the community there, we have a few hundred people, we, we channel and now we speak galactic languages. Those, it's, it's another story, basically. People, many people speak languages for a lifetime and then they find us and they discover that there are other people who speak the same language. Most popular is Arcturian. Another popular is Liran, uh, Pleiadian, and uh, snake language, reptilian language, so on. So that's another, uh, that's a great confirmation. At some point, um, like Jim Kama came up with Arcturian language, someone else came up with Arcturian language. We had like more than you know 15 people speaking Arcturian language. We have uh, we had a webinar where like we do it all live. Words nine people spoke Arcturian language, taking turns and um, playing a play, some sort of a play, and then Jim translated what it was. And then he found a, a young lady who speaks that Arcturian language, who published that maybe ten years before us, or maybe seven years before us. So that was a nice confirmation. So people independently come up with the same same uh, language. Not many understand it, but some do. Some do. And now Wendy is pretty good. Um, Brian is very good. Brian seems is very good with uh, galactic languages. He speaks perfect Arcturian, right? Interesting. Has it has it been recorded? Yeah, it's all, it's all on YouTube. Somewhere. We do it like live, live and recorded on right. Hangouts. We have like tons of videos. Um, you know, hundreds hundreds of hours of videos and uh, it's like three years now mm. and every Saturday we have a webinar when somebody channels and there is like 10 20 people asking questions right it's all live and recorded all the God, you're way over there yeah, you're no, way over there yeah way over there yeah we're just we're just we're just down home folks just trying to make contact <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have the contact right? but it's kind of it's channeled contact right? yeah I want more more um, more tangible right i got my my confirmation so i'm i'm happy like my most of my confirmations are of spirit nature i i basically there is that sus suspicion theory that you know what if aliens are not real what if spirits are real and it's conspiracy of the spirits right now it's like, yeah, that yeah, they yeah, pretend yeah. to be aliens right right and yeah. you, you cannot, don't know you, you have to test it right you have to test it you have to get no fear to collect the data Sort it out. Be there, but and Tom Campbell mentions this also. Maybe this is just a gigantic hologram, and the guy who's running the program is inserting all the data. <laughs> it's not just the right direction. I mean, but you know, I, I interviewed several um, experiencers who visited the, the ships, and their stories are so real. So, I, it's it's pretty real. Yeah, well, like I said, maybe they're so advanced it, it seems paranormal. That's all, and, and I think it's hard for us to. Uh, Distinguish per, uh, ghost activity and their activity. It's, it's so close. The, you know, uh, yeah, another suspicion. I always tell um, during our huh? contact work, I know you hear the spirits, but um, not tonight. We have a date with ET. <laughs> 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 I always put that out there. I don't want to ruin the data tonight. Well, but we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be polite. <laughs> no, I, I do it all the time, yeah. Sometimes it is bother me, like you know, when their stories are not coherent. I say, let's speak to angels. And angels are much more so. They authorized. It is are not authorized to release a lot of information. And angels are messengers. They are much more. They have more authority. So when it is cannot answer a question, invite an angel, and angel will answer that. So oh. so when it is disappoint you, invite angels. Okay. Well, I'll invite <laughs> angels then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a breath.
team, um, we, we usually play the app, the meditation app. Ah. It's nice to have somebody live. Sure. Because I'm not a trained meditation expert, so I have to put on Dr. Greer's I'm trained spiel, you know. In the past life. <laughs> bring it on. No, it, more, it's it's, it's natural it for me. I, yeah. I'm surprised, but um, it's so easy for me to do the thing, like meditative things, right. to guide it. When I'm in the church, I, I associate myself with people on their on uh, how do you, on the altar. I have been uh, a priest in many lifetimes, so it's kind of a, a priest or shaman. So. Right, right. And genetically, I studied my genetics. You know, I have um, a series of ra uh, Jewish rabbis in my ancestry. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and uh, the most famous one is uh, Maharal of Prague. It's called Maharal of Prague and. Uh, Iguda Ben Le uh, Lev, and uh, he is the one who created Golem. Have you heard about Golem? No. Golem? Golem, not the other one. <laughs> That's very close. <laughs> what? Golem? Golem. No, I don't know Golem. Yeah, it was like um, in Czechia in uh, about 600 years ago, uh, there was um, a, the uh, there was Jews were persecuted, mm -hmm. and Jewish settlement, they created uh, a robot called Golem. And Golem first, he kind of threw away the um, offenders, mm -hmm. but then he went out of control, so my ancestor had to turn it off. So that's the story. Like, like I think it's a legend, but um, that's how it, he, he's known in modern movies, like Golem. Right, right. Oh, great. So if you can lead the meditation, that'd be great. Because we have another guy, too, just in case he doesn't show up. Or just in case he just wants to relax for the evening. He's our Kundalini guy. Kundalini. I love Kundalini. Sure. Yeah. It'd be good. I'd be, I always wanted... Uh, this team is much stronger. This this part two team is much stronger than the first team. We have a lot of energy workers on board. Which is nice to have, you know. Yeah. So I have a couple of friends who uh, work with um, vortexes, and I don't know the technology yet. I don't know the technique or the steps, but it feels that I want to do it. Vortex? Yeah, natural vortexes. Basically, the idea is that the vortexes are conscious, mm -hmm. and. Um, they're pretty powerful, so you don't control them, just become friends with them. And uh, my friend went to, uh, her name is Lucia, she is Russian Jewish, and she went to the places of uh, Jewish Holocaust in uh, Northern Europe, in, in Baltics, and uh, she had to do lots of healing on the energies of the area. So she does that. She comes, does meditation, basically. Performs certain rituals, certain work. And recently she went to Egypt to do the same thing. So she works on big things. She just will work, you know. She's called to do that. She's kind of very powerful uh, magician, I would say, or spirit worker. So I need to ask her, what's, t what's the technique? What, what do you actually do? But as I understand, it's it's all the same stuff. You kind of come together in, as a group, make a circle, meditate, um, raise your vibration first to reach the vibration of the vortex. And then, uh, as I usually do, we sing the songs and chant for the vortex to just to give it our love. What else can we do, right? Give our love and praise and honor. There is not, not much more. And send our healing. I guess... Everything on earth needs healing, so that's what we do. We're healers. I teach healing, I teach Reiki, and uh, and that's fun. I can feel the energy. So so I uh, I recently experienced, I guess, should I tell it on camera? I will tell, tell it. You can always edit it out. <laughs> no, I don't like editing. Oh, editing okay. is hard. You have to scroll and find and yeah. cut and yeah. uh, sophisticate it. Okay. And the files are huge. It's it just, you know, we upload everything on YouTube, that's it. So, I just will tell in the general sense. Um, I found a place, or created, or found a place. It's really hard to tell what was first. But I was kayaking on the ocean. It's, you know, very lazy kayaking. There was no waves. 
you saw my kayak, right? So I go in the ocean and I, I chant all the time. I, I know the ocean is conscious and it's big and it is, uh, it's part of the matrix and it's like God. It's, right. It's a manifestation, one of the manifestations of God or feminine part of God, fluid part of God. So you kind of become friends with it. And uh, last time when I enter, um, when I enter, there are waves coming, and this time it was completely flat, like no waves. So all the surfers, they were very unhappy. But, you know, for me, it's just, you know, go chandler. So I enter that, and out of nowhere, like no waves around, one big wave comes to me, like from nowhere, like phew, and flashes at me, so I'm all wet, in, in wetsuit. I said, okay, I laugh. <laughs> How probable it is that, you know, out of nowhere. Uh, and I say, stop it, stop it. And in response, the second wave, even bigger, like, phew, flashes on me. I said, okay, I got your humor. You just have to be careful when you go to the ocean, even though there is no waves. Anyway, I go out and um, I chant there. And recently I was attracted to uh, a guru, female guru called... Ananda Mai Ma, Ananda Mai Ma. She was um, around maybe 50 years ago, 50 to 100 years ago. It's like her lifespan there. And I was connected to her in my past life. So she was wonderful. She was spaced out most of the time. And her students, followers, devotees were just taking care of her. And she did miracles and just connected. Basically was meditating most of the time and uh, when i started chanting her name i noticed that the water around me became uh, very smooth like around it was rough but there, I, I made, the circle around me was smooth and as a scientist i needed to like experiment and control right what if it is just it just seems like if you move to the other place well it becomes rough again so move to the other place it was rough again and I kind of was kayaking there, I was coming back, I saw dolphins. I love dolphins. It was like maybe fifth time I see dolphins. And I came closer to them, I was chanting to them, and uh, and then the birds started coming. And we have in uh, La Hoya Cove, there is a huge number of birds. So about 200 big birds came, and I was a little bit scared because just too many. But, you know, I thought it's maybe something spiritual is happening, so I will be happy and uh, pretend that I know what, what I'm doing. But I was chanting, kind of sitting in place, looking at, for dolphins and uh, looking at the birds. So they made a circle around me. And they span around me for about a quarter turn. So I think they created a vortex or they marked the vortex. And they figured out they... they there was a fish underneath, so they kind of was fishing. They were landing and kind of diving to, to catch fish. But in any way, they made a circle and they spun around me. And I kind of mapped this place. So I want to go there and again and see maybe it is a constant static vortex where you can come there and experience something. You know, it's not very far. It's, it's, uh, it's the area where kayakers always go, or La Jolla Shores, they can hang around there. But I think it's a special place there. So that was my first experience with the Vortex. And then my friend, uh, her name is Alison. She said, she is very, uh, very psychic. She found another Vortex on, on the beach and told me where it is. So I went and meditated there. And I thought, mm, maybe that's Alison's. How about I find my own Vortex? There should be other Vortex. Yeah, yeah, yes. And just kind of places of where the energy is concentrated. Right, right. You mentioned I saw that in your... Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, and when I was kayaking, I just looked around and I was really attracted to one place. I said, oh, that would be mine. I, I like it. I really liked it. So I found it on the map. Then I went there. It's nice. It's not big. It's small. It's small and smooth because some of them are like really huge. It's really hard to relate to a huge vortex. It's just too much for us, for a human. And so I started that, um, I invite, made an invitation on Facebook and, um, uh, Denise uh, responded. Yeah, right? I saw that, yeah. yeah. So that's just the beginning, but now I am sort of practicing my ritual, ceremony, because 
I have to figure out what to do, right? <laughs> so the celebration ceremony. But I, I, I really like it. I really want to do. Yeah, the good vibe. You had a good vibe there. Yeah. I really want to do those. There is tons of vortexes, and it's a way to connect to, to them and to energy, and also get healing. I think we, we go both ways. We get healing and send healing. Right. So that that feels really really nice. It's I, I I'm really excited. As soon as I got that idea, that was like. I'm obsessed by all about it. Just working on vortexes, and I don't see many people around doing that. It's sort of new, I think. Well, yeah, you have a niche now, so uh, you have a niche, niche, a niche, yeah. a niche in that in that area, and you write stories and books about it and how to do it and protocols and protocols, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's you're way beyond us. You're way over there. <laughs> no, I, 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 we can do the same thing on your, yeah, that, yeah, on that, your that, uh, in our little area. Yeah, that was definitely something going on there. Out. You'll feel it. Oh my God, you'll feel it. It's enormous. It was, there, there was it used to be an Indian site. Ah. So I think the spirits are there, and I think they made contact back in the day. The, ah. the Indians, the the the, the Sandaguitos. and oh, this is what happened. Olga decided to do a medicine wheel at our site. And it's tobacco, right? So, after that, she sp she went. We we had the same tent together. When she went to, to our tent, she heard footsteps, and she thought it was me. And she says, she, she went to me at the fireplace. I says, was that you over there, Pete? No, she heard footsteps. <laughs> there were footsteps over there by the tent, and um, it was the classic case of the invisible. Footsteps. Uh -huh. It's very common in the our CE5 work. So I think, okay, then I researched the area. Why the tobacco? So I called up my archaeologist friend. He says, I asked him, what kind of religious uh, things do they use in, in this particular Indian site, the Sendiguitos tobacco? Interesting. So it, it either could have been the spirits or it could have been ET playing with us or. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Olga is very connected, yeah. Yeah. She did channelings for me. Okay, so you, 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 you know Jet, Jeet, right? Jeet, yeah. Yeah, we're part of that. She had a... I met him, her... I met Jeet through Olga through her meditation uh, weekly uh, 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 meetups. Weekly? I yeah, know about that was uh, about a year ago, oh, two years ago. We, okay. we meditate, and that's how I met Jeet at his apartment. Uh -huh. And I mentioned the, the UFO thing. He was a little fascinated, and uh, I did the um, what do they call it? a hot hot house? The, oh, I forgot they call that thing. A sweat lodge. Uh huh. Did that for the first time with him. Um, it's kind of kind of a close knit community going here with the right. Yeah. So. All right. My next story is. So we channeled the aliens. And one of them was very talkative. His name was Lakesh. And he, you know, he's still very talkative. <laughs> uh, and Lakesh in uh, some of human languages means uh, another you. Mm. So um, he is a Pleiadian, very short, and his, as he described, very short and wide. He says, I'm looking like a cookie man. And they, they float in the air. The planet is different, they float in the air. And they're very different from us. They human, human looking, I think even they are mammals, but uh, the chemistry is very different. They can breathe some not breathable air, eat something not Something animal. else. Yeah. Very different. Anyway, so I invited everybody to, to visit me and uh, him as well. And uh, they say, yeah, maybe, maybe. They never promise anything, but say maybe. So one night, and I, at that time, I was like really eager. So I would move my bed away from my wife so they can visit me, right? And not to scare my wife, right? <laughs> you know, so much suffering for that. I know, how can she put up with this? <laughs> right. Um, anyway, I'm sleeping by myself and, uh, and I experience a nightmare. It's like a really, really scary nightmare. Not not specific um, sub uh, storyline, but just a sensation of real real fear. Mm -hmm. And I remember having those many of those in my early childhood. 
like it's always like the idea that I'm so small and out of control and things are huge, like planets are big and I'm like really scared. And I'm losing myself basically. And this time, after many years, now I'm 53, so after many years I get the same, I think it was a couple of years ago, so 51, just the same thing. And I thought, maybe it's aliens coming. And as, as I realized, maybe it's aliens coming, so I woke up Oh, that's maybe aliens. And there was like a vibration, like uh, not outside, but inside. I, I, I have it once in a while, so it's nothing new, but mm. kind of strong vibration. And I said, if you aliens come on in, I, I, I will not be afraid. <laughs> it was a conscious decision. Okay, I'm not afraid. And it came in, and I felt myself being in, in the two bodies, in my body and in another body, which is very short and fat. Mm. So, I think I could have moved his fingers a little bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to do any active things because I was afraid uh, mm -hmm. to spook it. Mm -hmm. And I hoped they would start speaking to me, but there was no mm -hmm. no communication. Maybe I was closed, but but I, I was certainly awake, and certainly there was a visitation there. It was something unmistakable. Never again I experienced that. So, mm -hmm. I was awake, and then after maybe 15 minutes being there, it left, and uh, and here I am, like nothing happening. So, There's reasons why that all happened. But, uh, yeah, and then I went to sleep, and I was, and then I, you know, talked to Jim, and we channeled Akesh, Lashkesh said, it wasn't him, but it was his um, uh, compatriot, who would, like, from the same planet who visited me. Right. Because I invited. I said, can I have more? I think, I think our task have already been planned out already so yeah. your chance for something else probably yeah exactly so you know, it's, you know it's, it's, it can be yeah. a, because I tell the people on camera they cannot give me more because it will be really on camera right yeah <laughs> yeah so I mean Mark had his visitation and he merged in with Tej Bar, came inside his body for uh -huh. two weeks two weeks <laughs> it was a long visit but it, it, it rocked his world I mean he was a very much not into this engineer left brain um yeah brian, brian told me that you know he introduced totally him holy changed everything and right yeah so yeah you know the story and a little bit yeah one day you interview mark so <laughs> what one day you interview mark sims oh that's a good idea yeah i like it too yeah so yeah we'll meet but uh yeah now we are Tell me more of uh, your proofs. What experiences did you have? My experiences is just um, actual synchronicities and uh, orbs showing up, uh, being touched, uh -huh. um, forehead, um, um, a feeling of. Uh, well, I love going camping anyway. I love doing it outdoors and. I like camping. Yes. Yeah, uh, I liked. Um, that that perhaps they're watching over me at, at this time in my life. It's I mean they follow you home. <laughs> I believe I you know I need I need as much protection as I can. <laughs> and um, I don't channel. I don't sense you know like you do. Um, I'm more my I think my task is to organize people mm -hmm. to get them together um, and and do it. And, I have I have the energy for it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I think what they what one person told me he, they like the purity of what of my heart because I don't want money out of this, which makes it even more legit. Um, our team does not um, charge anything. Mm -hmm. We just ask for good coffee and food. <laughs> uh -huh. We go camp in. We we'll share our food. That's it. Or, or we can split the camp and fee. That's it. Uh -huh. uh, we don't we don't require um, because we don't want to. You know, it just it feels weird. And a lot of other people charge, and we don't charge anything. I'm thinking about charging for our service. So far, we did most of the stuff for free on our community, but yeah, no, it's I'm different. In the, it's, di it's different in the Reiki community. You know, it's different Not in the Reiki, heel and the human colony. It's, human colony it's thing. Channeling things. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about starting the subscription because other channels do subscriptions. Maybe right. we should do right. But uh, that would be complimentary. Like. Two parallel lines. We do free stuff and we'll do paid stuff, maybe. 
Right. I still need to get consensus. Or, or if we do a, a paid thing for our group, it would pay for cameras or it'll pay for, you know, the EMF detector, you know, tools for the trade. I don't know. There should be a nice model. I guess first you become popular and then you kind of control things with, with, with the money a little bit. Mm. But it should be accessible to people. Yes. The main idea is to make it accessible. Yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm, I, I, we always uh, um, train people for free. Um, they actually come and then they form their own teams. What's the process? Do, can you share any of the process? We just follow the protocols in the ET app. <laughs> ah. ET contact tool. Just follow the instructions. What's the name of the app? ET contact tool. ET contact, contact tool. Tool. It's um. Okay. It's Dr. Greer's thing. It's it's great for the beginner, and it, it goes through the protocols, and voila. So you install it, and then you come to the campsite? Yeah, we just plug it in and play the tone. The tones are important. We like the crop circle tones. Ah. Those are pretty. I like that. It's very relaxed. Okay. And, and uh, I have a singing bowl. I, I hey. do that. It's very nice. And then, I'm, since I don't med I don't, I'm not a meditation instructor i just played dr greer's meditation thing and uh -huh. but i i actually enjoy just a silent meditation uh -huh. just completely quiet uh -huh. and just listen and so basically you meditate no that's, that's the hardest part staying awake and meditating and staying warm ah that's the hardest part doesn't how long do you have to meditate um you can last for an hour you can last for uh well we take breaks you know bathroom okay. breaks and take you know. okay and sometimes you can go real quickly and uh, things pop up and there's you have a show things show up and then it stops so you meditate with open eyes or closed eyes um it doesn't matter you can, you can keep it open to, to watch the skies i prefer closed mm -hmm. um some people i i went to the um enrico villanueva enrique he was part of the uh, six uh, uh um six or pop South America. Okay. He's in LA. He's very, they're very, they were the ones that started the CE5 way before Dr. Greer. Okay, okay. And I went on his training last year in Mount Shasta. Okay. And it's the Brahma group and they have protocols and they do um, um, chanting. Okay. Rama, Rama, many times. It's, it's a voice. Nice, nice. Rama. And they're, they have a relationship with extraterrestrials, a certain, certain beings that show up. Um, it's called the Rama group. You, it's okay. yeah. They actually did again. They actually did CE five way before um, Dr. Greer's um, formation. Okay. Yeah. And you reach so that's it. Way. You come out. Uh, uh, why do you need the application? Oh, it helps filter out people. What do you mean filter? Uh, out filters people? out people that um, um, either they don't meditate or they're they're afraid of extraterrestrials and abduct them. So you them. came to the camping ground and then you get filtered out. Well, before before they could come with us, uh -huh. we have them fill out this questionnaire. Okay. And, and if they don't fill it out, they're not that serious. Oh, so it's just a barrier. Yeah, a barrier, yes. Then we have a personal interview to, to see who you are, get a good feeling. Okay. Um, make sure you're not crazy. <laughs> I am crazy, for sure. Oh, you're, 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 you're nice crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah who is not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because, you know, once you get, you know, we don't like... We had a group one time, and then somebody told us about us, and they showed up, and it kind of disrupted the whole chemistry. All right. Who's this guy coming out of nowhere? All right. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, it's the cohesion part, and everybody that doesn't like surprises during uh, our group sessions. But once it's set, it's pretty much closed for that for that night, so we can all. So why do you focus. need uh, an application there, the 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 app? Why do you need the app on the site? You don't. You don't. It just helps for the beginner. Oh, the sound. It gives you a sound. The sound. I like okay. the sound. Okay. Um, everybody has the app, so you don't have to worry about it. So we have the app. No, no, I'm trying to figure out the technology. So there is no technology, basically. Mm. Yeah, you just meditate, and that's it. Right, because Rama doesn't have an app. They just they chant. And they have writers. Uh, they call it... To do what? Uh, Automatic writing? Chant. Yes. They emphasize automatic writing. And he, he says you're either an antenna... Or not an antenna. Okay. You're probably you're probably an antenna. You can you can sense some. And Maybe. But yeah. 
Okay. The last person I haven't seen is James Gilliard. I don't know. Who is that? He's another uh, contactee. Um, he's in uh, Washington. Okay. Um, he had um, profound experiences. He has a ranch. Okay. Uh, and he, you're, he trains people up there. It's very cheap, and things show up at his ranch. Uh-huh. It's a big vortex there. He's Look him up, James Gilliard. Okay. He's really way out there. Okay. James Gilliard. Oh. Yeah, no, G-I-L-L-I -L -L yeah. something. East City Ranch, East... I know that it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's, he's actually... He's actually... He, he's... Uh, besides how to describe this guy. Value-wise. Low cost, high value. <laughs> okay. For, you know, for the amount you spend there, it's like $25 a night, and then to see him is like $125. Okay. Now that the guru is different, he's, he's the wine and cheese crowd I call. He's three thousand six hundred, <laughs> just for just for a week with the guy, okay. excluding the hotel and food. So you're gonna spend some money when you when you see this guy, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a different crowd, different set, but I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I was blessed by my uh, channeled beings to go into that path basically to start show up in the in those communities mm. i don't know how how to do it. but uh, and i don't know even what was what's the specifics of my message yet but sort of i was always attracted to public speaking maybe i can do some yes something. i could see that i could see you doing the the slideshow yeah maybe a slideshow do, or maybe dance or something dan whatever there's, <laughs> there's MUFON in san diego they always want speakers to to speak really that's a different crowd it's a different crowd it's a different crowd i tried they didn't they're, accept they're, me they're kind of very 50s if, and very cold war if you mention channeling they they, not, they, they get scared allow, they don't allow that yeah they don't like channeling yeah but so, i'm they know who we are. I mean, I said, dude, things show up. I don't care what you say. It's through meditation. And you know what I say? If you don't believe in it, that's okay. We just leave you behind. We're moving forward. Uh -huh. That's why people like you, you get older, you die off. We have a new generation coming. <laughs> right. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, we will die off too. Right. But, but at least, <laughs> at least we're, we're planting the new seeds for the new generation that is coming right. on board. So I see a lot of these kids are very accepting of this and quite curious about contact. Uh huh. Yeah, technology-wise, I'm into technologies. I'm researching stuff, but again, it's kind of I'm get stuck, get, getting stuck there. It's like I'm 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 into light therapy, you know, red light, infrared light, all fancy uh, electromagnetic things. Mm. You have lots of toys, mm -hmm. toys for meditation, for healing, stuff like that. But um, some of them are efficient, but there is no oh. In the field, we get sometimes we get flashes of light on us. Ah! They come down and they. I think it's an upgrade, because I noticed my ESP gets uh -huh. a little better every time I go out in the field and I come home. Oh yeah, yeah. The the bus shows up in three minutes all the time for me now because I just know. <laughs> it's weird, but yeah, me and Cameron experienced it. Flashes of light. Nice. And, it, and they say it is an improvement to your DNA or an upgrade. Right. I'm. Yeah, I have a DNA background, so I'm. I guess my main contribution could be someday, someday, um, the code for DNA, mm -hmm. because the code is not yet discovered yet. Uh, you know the code. Morphogenic field. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the code for the morphogenic field. Uh, the uh, codes which have been discovered so far are simplistic. Basically, how the DNA encodes the proteins. That is discovered like 50 years ago, but uh, that covers only about two three percent of the sequence, and uh, the rest of the 97 percent of the sequence still is not deciphered. And we understand that morphogenic, morphogenetic code, the wave code, the how it resonates, it's uh, it's up to deciphering. So we we are looking for the patterns how the DNA resonates. And somehow our channeled friends, they don't tell us by some reason. Uh, they give us a little bit of help, but I guess it's up to us to discover that. Because the sequence is there, we know our sequence and all. But basically, if you give to a scientist, the modern geneticist, a sequence of a human 
and of a mouse. And if they don't have a reference database, they cannot build a mouse from the sequence. The nature can, but the science doesn't understand where is the, the shape of the mouse written in the sequence. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, how the, does the DNA generate that field? How do you generate the body, the, right. Right. the etheric body? Right. It should be written there, and it should be decipherable. There is some language, some patterns, and I have some ideas how it is written there, but you know, one person doing it part time is not sufficient. You know, like really need more people, more funding, and more uh, focus on that. But we kind of try. And there are other people who are looking in general in that direction. But I guess it takes a combination of knowledge in physics in water structure. Somehow it's all related to water structure. Basically, the DNA shapes the water, and water shapes the DNA. Something about that. In the memory of the water, maybe there. Yeah. There's memory going on and yeah. it senses, and there's so, and there were actually light beams. It's, there's a little bit of light that comes out of the cells that we right. can't see. Uh, yeah, yep, be a photonics. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember reading that somewhere. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, the best scientist in that direction, strangely, but is David Wilcock. He really? Worked, <laughs> yeah. He. <laughs> yeah. He's I, not, he always has the entourage of beautiful women with him. <laughs> David Wilcock. <laughs> Sounds not serious, but in what he wrote, he did most serious research in that direction. He kind of, he's more like encyclopedia type of mind. He would collect everything and rewrite in a book, but he pronounced it like really strongly in several of his books how it should be. He didn't discover it, but he is good. His science is pretty good. He's always overstating. So if he says something is proven, it means that somebody mentioned it. Right. It doesn't mean that it's proven, but. But the idea is he he he's he uh, intuitive, so intuitively he gets the ideas really, really, really right, well. right, right. So his book uh, Source Field Investigation is right to the point. He's huh. really good. Uh, second crazy person is uh, uh, Dan Winter. Dan, I know Dan Winters. You do. He's my friend. I mean, I'm on Facebook. Wow. I don't understand some of this stuff, but he's way out there, I swear. He's way out there. He's a fucking way out there. I, he's I, fucking way I out. got his papers, I'm reading, I don't want to do this. This I feel so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for, at him uh, since, I guess, 2001. It's like now 15 years. And at that time, I was very suspicious. He like was like too too much out there. Oh, God. Tell and me now, about it. And now... Makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yes. He, and... His main video was done maybe 10 years ago, and it's still so beautiful. Um, it's all kind of channeled by him. It's just amazing. Right. I spoke to him once on the phone, and he was not easy to communicate with. He was not answering the questions. Right. He was pushing his agenda so much, right. there was no conversation. Well, he's an engineer, for God's sakes. You know how they are. <laughs> right. I'm an engineer, too. but uh, They can't be focused just for he, that. Yeah, he, but he is great. So yeah, Dan Winter, Wilcock, and uh, Richard Allen Miller. Richard Allen Miller is an older guy with uh, long hair and laughing loudly. And Kerry Cassidy interviewed him. Now he's all over the place, all right. on YouTube. Right. So Richard Allen Miller also knows stuff. And I s emailed with him a few times, and he gave me excellent advice. So he was, he was right to the point. He said, look at... Uh, how do you call it? Microtubules. Yes, yes. I read about microtubules as for the uh, consciousness um, connection. Really? Yes, the microtubules in your brain. There's a doctor called Dr. Long, I think. You got it? Dr. Long? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm bad with names, but he's a, he is a, either a surgeon or something in the medical field who discovered these microtubules. Uh -huh. In your brain, which is it's it's a possibility. That's how consciousness is received as okay. receivers. Receivers, yes. Yes. Yeah, the consciousness is the brain is a, an antenna, right? Right, it's an antenna, exactly. Right. So, I looked at it. It looks reasonable. So, I I just need to do more more work. But it's really hard to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. I need a community of people who think about it. It's it has to be like Jim. Uh, Jim Watson and Francis Crick, there was at least two of them who were right. speaking all the time about right, that stuff. Right, right. So I need people who can speak and think about it. 
Well, we'll put it out there on the internet and say, hey, this is what's going on. I That's mean, I'm sure there's another... I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's another uh, biophysicist out there with the on same on board uh, forward thinking. Yeah, let's thinking. talk about... I have some ideas and uh, some original ideas how to decipher this stuff. But I need more help. My brain is not big enough. I need more brain. Brain right. power. Right, right. I kind of can intuit it, but then to combine the parts, somebody needs to like really dig deeper. Mm -hmm. Like Francis Crick and uh, Jim Watson, that's my you know model pair. They they discovered the double helix way before others. Mm -hmm. So Jim Watson, I think he had intuitive guesses, but and he was driving force. But Francis Crick who knew stuff. Francis Crick knew all the detail, all the parts. Mm -hmm. But the main step was done by by, by Watson. The main breakthrough. Mm -hmm. He just pushed and pushed and pushed and finally it clicked and that was the answer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it takes at least more, at least two people, mm -hmm. the more the better, to right. think about it, to create the reality right. where it is uh, manifested. So, uh, and in terms of my... Is this still, it's, is this still kind of tabooish out there in the uh, biology, physics world? If you start doing, I call it the woo-woo, does it, does it hit a third rail? Uh, people, it's not only the taboo, people just don't get it. It's like, for them, if you start speaking waves, they just you lose them right away. Right. Uh, the, the, the ones who speak waves, they don't understand uh, the importance of that. They can speak about physics of it, get excited about nanometers, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. To combine the biology, the DNA, and waves, there are, it's alternative science. Uh, there are several more names around, like Garyayev, uh, and uh, Fritz Albert Pope and uh, and several others. There is a community who speaks about, but uh, there are different different angles at which you can approach that. Mm -hmm. So Garev gave me a blessing. I spoke to him. He said, "Yeah, I believe it's right." But again, he was pushing his agenda at the same time. Right. right, right. He wanted to sell his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, can you blame him? It's his life work, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, so I don't know. Um, the story about origin of humanity, origin of man is interesting, but I'm still confused about it. That's another story very interesting, which I kind of dig through. And uh, I'm finishing the book now. Yeah, it would be like my sixth book. That would be the update on the things and kind of... Uh, the story goes that my friend's daughter, she's only 15 years old, and she's kind of a, a starseed child, which is very This advanced. generation, I think, it's been changing, like Cameron's yeah. kids. Yeah. That one child can see things. So, um, she says, what can I read about aliens? And I look at my, you know, all the books I know. There is nothing for, for, for teenagers who... Oh! Ray Dahl. She What's has it? Ray Dahl, the, the person that you want a friend on Facebook. Okay. She has a coloring book on Amazon. Uh -huh. For e C E five for children, uh -huh. it's really cute. I mean, it's that's it's starting. It's out right. there. Okay, so yes, so we need more books for people who are not clouded, who don't need proving. They just want information. So I'm writing a book where I just give it as I understand it, without proving anything. Just you know, Pleiadians are from Pleiades. Mm. Yeah, yellow from Pleiades. And so on. Um, just put it out there. <laughs> just, just no sugar coated. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Put it out there. Yeah. So I'm finishing that. So I guess based on that book, I will create my talk and then start start, start speaking. First on YouTube, and then we'll see who right. wants me to listen. Exactly. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> You gotta start somewhere. It's lonely when you first start out. You get like one view. <laughs> no, no, I have no. We have reasonable number of views. Like our usual Jim's, Jim's channel is are about a thousand views. Wow, that's Kapunik a lot. Kapunik about ten thousand views. That's a lot. It's huge. Uh, and me is about hundred views, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually three hundred views. But some of my videos where I kind of get onto the right topic. You know Bashar, right? Bashar. Yeah, I heard Bashar, yeah. So at some point, Bashar said something which was on YouTube. And then he came through Jim. Bashar said something through Daryl Anka, who is his channeler. 
And then Bashar is a, a, came through Jim on our webinar and also said the same thing. So I combined these two videos together and published that. It's, it's nice, it's a nice proof when the same extraterrestrial speaks the same thing through two independent channelers. And I'm sure Jim is not watching YouTube. It's it's not right. Oh, that's good. It's good to have confirmation to two different it's, channelers. It's, that's when I say, okay, there's something going on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we had that situation in one of our field work when one channeler sensed it, and then the other guy confirmed it. No way. No. Yes, independently. It was Doctor Gray at the time, but yeah, it was fascinating. I said, "Wow, there's something going on. I love it." <laughs> That's how uh, the spirits introduced to me one of my incarnations. They, uh, on the same day, had two different channelers channeling to me, and I asked, "What should I read?" To both of them, and they gave me the same book. Yeah, it's confirmation right there. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, they do like pretty things like that right. nowadays. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. We should wrap it up. Is it a wrap? Yeah, it's Goodbye, everybody. Thank you Bye. for watching. Do you have any advertisements? No advertisements. We're just we're just a bunch of people that go out in the field and make contact. Um, you don't invite any people. We we have to go through the process. So the interview, fill out the forms. Uh, yeah. How do they find you? Uh, we they find us through uh, Facebook. CE5 San Diego, it'll pop right up. Yeah, one word, CE5, Close Encounters 5, San Diego, CE5 San Diego, one word, CE5 San Diego, search on Facebook and then you find Peter Chan. Or one of our members, we're all on there doing our thing. Yeah. Right. Do you have any advertisements? Uh, tomorrow we do Shans Once and Yay! Actually, I know that will be published after that. But anyway, Shans Once and is uh, the. Yeshua channel Yeshua from Yael for many years now, so it's nice to have him. And on Sunday we do Kapulnik. And I'm considering to uh, start a subscription service on our YouTube channel, so you can find us on uh, Human Colony uh, Human Colony on uh, Facebook, Human Colony group, private group. And join us on Facebook and uh, join our discussions. And I invite, as usual, help with transcriptions of our channelings. And I invite help with hosting our webinars. Right now, Bree is doing most of the host, all the hosting. And we need more work power. So if you are good with timing and technology, we can teach you, Bree, Bree can teach you or I can teach you what buttons to press. And then we need hosts to, do host, uh, to host our uh, hangouts. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for your attention thank you for and uh, thank you for being with us have a good day